This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to make this video today. It's a little bit of an impromptu video. It might be all over the place, but I'm sitting here waiting, uh, checking the tracking number for a shipment that's coming in today, which I didn't think was gonna be here today, uh, hence the sort of impromptu nature of this. So I've got two boxes here in front of me, my 35 millimeter Summicron aspherical and the 50 millimeter Summilux aspherical. These two lenses I've been using on my M cameras for a number of years now, especially the 35. That's always been sort of my go-to lens for the M mount system. And out of all of the 50 millimeters I've tried to incorporate uh, into my just regular use, the Summilux, it's just great. It's an amazing lens. Um, however, when I bought it a few years ago, I was really hoping like, this is the lens I've wanted for a long time and it's incredible. So surely if I buy this, it will get uh, a lot more use than other 50 millimeter lenses would in my just kind of normal routine or normal use. And I love it, it's a great lens. However, uh, I just haven't used it as much as I would like to. So I just took these two lenses and cleaned them up and got them packaged back up in their boxes and leather pouches and everything. And I'll be sending them out to their new owners later this afternoon once this new shipment comes in. I've talked about it plenty of times before, but 35 millimeter, especially on an M rangefinder, it's just like the perfect pairing for me. I was always a 50 millimeter user for years, whether it was a DSLR or an old film SLR. It wasn't until I got my M6, which was 10 years ago this month actually, uh, it wasn't until then that I picked up a 35 as just the regular everyday carry. And since then, 35 has just been the way I naturally want to see and compose things. Um, it just feels like the perfect sort of documentary storyteller lens. I've used a lot of different 35 millimeter lenses over the years, everything from Voigtlander and Zeiss and Leica. Uh, the 35 aspherical, this Summicron has been sort of the go-to for a long time. I also really love the version four of this lens. Um, it's got a very unique look to it, but there's been one lens that I have never owned or tried that has always kind of been on my mind, and that's the 35 millimeter Summilux. And for a couple of months now with the M11 monochrome, I take that camera with me everywhere. I love it. And in that time frame, the two lenses that I've owned, typically, like always with even my M6, a 35 and a 50, I've always kind of paired these two because they're close enough to be sort of similar. There's not a really like jarring difference when you're looking at two photos made from each lens side by side. However, I feel like they do both have unique advantages. However, the 50 millimeter, I always take it with me in the bag and I just don't ever find myself using it. And I hate seeing something like this lens, something that I wanted for many years and it's just an incredible lens in itself. It just doesn't get enough use. And if you know me, I'm not really a camera hoarder. I like to use my cameras and my lenses. And if they don't get that much use, I would much rather put that money towards something I'm actually going to use or just to a photographer that would actually use it. In the last 10 years that I've been using an M camera, if I looked at the amount of pictures made with a 35, it's probably at least 90 to 95% of the pictures that I've made have been with a 35 millimeter lens. And so for the sake of consistency and my OCD and also just for like a, the, the idea of practice and a discipline, I've really wanted to just stick to a one camera, one lens setup, or at least that's been on my mind lately as I've continued to just keep this thing in the bag basically and it doesn't get nearly enough use. So I started thinking about, you know, letting go of this lens and I started thinking about committing to 35 and I thought it would be worth a try at least because I've never tried it before. If I sold these two lenses, the 35 Summicron and the 50 Summilux, that would be enough to buy the 35 Summilux, the latest version, which also has a unique sort of advantage or just an extra you know, benefit of having close focus with the rangefinder. Well, on a rangefinder camera, you're not actually focusing with the rangefinder for that close focus, uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. It's a brand new lens. It was just updated in the last year or so, and I thought if I'm gonna be committing to one lens only, not have any other lenses in my bag, just that one focal length, 
it would kind of make sense to have sort of the most versatile version of that lens. So not only getting the extra stop of light, whether that be for separation or for low light. However, I really don't need to worry about low light necessarily with the M11 monochrome. You can practically see in the dark with that thing. That paired with the close focus as opposed to being stuck at 0.7 meters like you typically would with a rangefinder. And it's all, it's, you know, one of those bucket list lenses. It's something I've always, you know, thought about, but never really wanted to pull the trigger. I figure I'm going to take these two lenses, sell that, and then just put that money right back into the one lens that could potentially be the last 35 for me to ever need. I've bought and sold tons of different cameras and lenses over the years. If you know me, you know that the way I like to do it is essentially sell gear to fund any new gear that I want to buy. That way, I'm not just adding to the camera hoard and sinking more and more money into this kit. Um, it all just sort of kind of, you know, revolves around whatever it is I'm shooting at the time. And these days, I'm down to the M11 monochrome, which I sold a lot of the stuff that I had in order to buy that camera. Or, well in order to buy the M11, which I then swapped out for the M11 monochrome. If you've been here for all of this, this is all old news to you. And I've got my M6 and that's it. Those are my two photo cameras that I have aside from the SLR 670S for all of my instant film needs, but that's what I'm working with. Those are just the two cameras for me and I'm very, very happy with that. And so I've sold these two lenses to two good friends, Corey Miller, he's buying the 35 and Chris Visser is buying the 50 millimeter. So it's nice to see these two lenses that are great lenses going to good homes and two good friends. And I'm currently waiting on the new 35 Sumalux to get here, which I purchased from Tim Lee. I bought from Tim before, I bought my original M11 from Tim. He's an amazing dealer. He has tons and tons of Leica stuff in his inventory. If you're looking for anything Leica, whether it be new or used, definitely check Tim out. He's got great prices, again, huge inventory. And uh, I sent him a message after I realized that these two lenses were gonna be sold. And within, you know, 24 hours, that lens was already leaving and on the way to me. Uh, Tim's great to work with. I'll put his information here if you wanna get in touch with him. Anything Leica related, he's your guy. But now we wait. Um, I'm waiting as patiently as I can for this box to arrive. I wanted to just kind of sit down and share a little bit as to why I decided to let go of the 35 and 50 in order to get this 35 Sumalux. Um, just trying to simplify things, one camera, one lens, and uh, just as a discipline and also just from knowing myself and knowing what I'm actually going to be using, um, I would encourage you to really focus on the gear that just works for you or the gear that you love the most. Uh, I find that if you're using gear that you really love and you really enjoy using, it's going to lead to more photos. That's going to lead to just more practice, getting more reps in. So uh, yeah, now we just wait as patiently as possible for this lens to get here. Once it arrives, I'll open it up and we'll take a look at it together. Uh, but until then, I'm just going to wait. So I'm going to take this time to thank our sponsor today, Squarespace, and let you know all about their service. When I created mattdayphoto.com, I did it with Squarespace. It was a no-brainer seeing as they had everything I needed in one place, and almost 10 years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use. Whether you're experienced with this sort of thing, or if you're just now starting out, there's tons of templates to choose from with drag and drop customization, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs or even create customizable galleries with password-protected pages if you'd like to share your work privately with your clients. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website. Whether you're selling physical or digital products, Squarespace has all of the tools you need to start selling online. You can also schedule appointments on your Squarespace website. You can offer online or in-person private sessions, workshops, and group classes. If you have your own community you'd like to further connect with, you can also use the Member Areas feature, where you can monetize your content by selling membership access to exclusive sections of your website. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial at squarespace.com and check it out for yourself. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A couple hours later and it has arrived. So let's get this thing open and take a look. All right, so we have here a sealed 35 Sumalux. This is brand new. 
and I'm very excited. Definitely not a small investment by any means. Uh, again, you know, selling lenses in order to fund it, it wasn't like I had to see all of that money just leave the bank account, but it's still a big investment. So leather pouch here, these are always nice, uh, especially when you have multiple lenses. It's nice to be able to throw one of these in the bag just for a little extra protection. However, now this will probably just stay at home because the one lens will pretty much always be on the camera. So here we go. Looks and feels very nice. Let me take a look here at the aperture blades. Okay. I had seen a couple people post about this lens when they received it, having the aperture rings essentially like out of alignment. So I was somewhat worried about that. Um, you know, especially for something this price, you don't want to see that brand new. Everything here looks great, feels great, and the new integrated lens hood, as opposed to the square hood, uh, this one here just rotates out. Built-in hood, it doesn't push in unless you actually rotate it. Um, I like this design a lot. It's a wider lens than my 35 Summicron. That lens was pretty compact, um, although throwing the lens hood on there, it's probably about the same length as this with the lens hood extended. Uh, however, the diameter, it is a little bit wider. This is a 46 millimeter filter thread as opposed to the 39 that was on the Summicron but uh, I like the feel of this so far. And if you can see here on the top of the lens, if I cover my face up here, you've got this uh, close focus scale here on the lens. So being able to focus a little bit closer past 0.7, there is essentially like a little kind of hard stop when you get to the end there. And that's gonna let you know if you go past it, then you're gonna be able to focus closer. Uh, now let's get this mounted on the M11 monochrome. Um, about that close focus with the rangefinder, the lenses uh, actually being coupled to the rangefinder there, you're going to be able to focus to 0.7 meters with the rangefinder. However, in order to get past that into the new close focus range, that feels really nice on there. Uh, in order to go past that, you're essentially uh, going to be in just the EVF or the LCD. So you're going to be using live view and just focusing with either the VisaFlex on top, the little EVF, or just using live view on the back of the LCD screen, which is not ideal, obviously. Uh, you know, being able to use the rangefinder for everything in a perfect world, for sure, uh, that would be the way to go. However, this is just one of those sort of like bonuses with this lens. Uh, again, same optics as the previous model, but with this one having a, a, just the aesthetic changes and the design with the lens hood and everything, also adding just that close focus ability. I'm curious myself how frequently I'm going to use that because that's always been the one thing that shooting with a rangefinder, that's the sacrifice. You know, focusing uh, close with an SLR is easy and common basically with a lot of different lenses. However, the rangefinder, I always sort of saw that as a trade off. I would like to be able to get closer than 0.7 meters at times. However, I prefer the rangefinder experience. Um, this sort of little workaround with these new designs that Leica is coming out with, uh, I'm curious to see how much in regular use I actually use that. So that's something I'm gonna you know, share in the upcoming videos. So I've had this lens for one week and I didn't want to just end this video with opening the lens up and showing you what it looks like. I actually wanted to use it and share some of the pictures that I've made over the first week just carrying this thing with me every day. So here are some of my just first impressions. In terms of carrying the lens with me, um, you know, it's a bigger and heavier lens than the Summicron that I used for years. However, I haven't noticed that at all in practice. It's still very small and lightweight and balances nicely on the camera, considering this is a full frame camera, a full frame 35 millimeter lens. 
Uh, you can't really complain about the size of these things. As well as the lens hood, I'm a big fan of the just integrated lens hood design that just rotates out. Um, in practice, it's nice never having to worry about it, you know, popping off or uh, taking it off in order to attach a real proper lens cap. Um, it's just nice being able to protect that front element when I'm just carrying the camera with me as I just go about my day. Uh, I'm a big fan of this design as opposed to the previous one that I've used for years. As far as how the lens performs, you know, I'm not shooting any kind of like charts or anything like that. I'm just using it to photograph life in front of me as I always do. But everything I've seen so far, I've been extremely happy with. Shooting wide open, I don't shoot wide open for everything. However, the times that I do, it's still very sharp, but has a really nice look to it. So no complaints there whatsoever. And using the close focus feature has been fun. You know, granted it's my first week with this lens and this is something I haven't been able to do with any other rangefinder lens that I've owned in the past. So I've been really having fun with it right now. We'll see, you know, how practical and how useful that feature is as time goes on, where I'm not necessarily in like the honeymoon phase. But uh, being able to do that in practice, it's just nice. It's nice to have a little bit more of a flexible lens for the times that I do wanna get close. And as I've been using it, I really haven't found myself using the VisaFlex EVF on top of the camera. I've mentioned it before. Um, this thing just kind of stays in the bag most of the time. And if I'm just walking out the door with the camera by itself, not taking this with me or putting it on top of the camera, it's a small addition but I still just really prefer the very minimal feel of using this camera with no grip, no thumbs up, no EVF, just using it like an M like I always do uh, and the way it feels, I just, I much prefer that. And so anytime I've used the close focus, I just use the LCD on back of the camera and uh, just focus this way, just looking at the camera like this and uh, using the focus peaking, that seems to be just fine in practice. So uh, we'll see if I get more use out of this thing as time goes on. But so far, just using live view on the back of the camera has worked great. And speaking a little bit more on that, just in the last week, only walking out the door with one camera, one lens, no camera bag needed, no extra lens needed. Uh, that feeling is something that I love. It's, you know, carrying around my M6. Oftentimes I would just have one lens for that camera as well. And it takes me back to that without, you know, also stuffing my pockets with film. Uh, it's nice to be able to just grab this, throw it over my shoulder and go out the door. No thoughts of, you know, should I take this lens? Should I take something else? Uh, just one camera, one lens. It fits my day to day life much better. And uh, I'm super excited about that. But of course, as I use this thing more and more, you'll see plenty of more pictures and thoughts as I continue to use it. So if there's anything you'd like to see from this lens or any questions you have, just leave them in the comments down below and we'll just keep the conversation going as well as into the next video. Uh, the next video I'm gonna be doing is actually editing some of the M11 monochrome files so you can see how I take them from start to finish uh, to get them to like a finished look that I would actually want to print. So if you're interested in that one, keep an eye out. It'll be up in the next couple of days, but that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I love you very much. I'll see you guys next time.